Hello guys, I am Sajjad from AI Sciences. If you are a beginner in artificial intelligence or data science, you are most welcome. We make interesting courses that help beginners to start their career in data science and artificial intelligence. Today our topic is different ways to detect outliers, right? We, in this video we will be detecting the outliers. In upcoming video we will be finding different ways to eliminating uh, you know outliers. So first of all what are outliers? So we'll try to learn that what is outlier and then we'll see why outliers come into our data and then we'll see different methods on um, that how can we detect outliers and finally uh, we'll be doing some hands-on practice in Python. So first of all what is an outlier? So according to definition outliers are samples that are exceptionally far from the mainstream of data which means if a data sample doesn't look like you know an average sort of data uh, we, we call it outlier for example in in this graph you can see that mostly data lies somewhere over let's say here um, no somewhere over here Right, so this is not now. Now these points are not in ordinary data, right? So we we may call them outliers. Um, these are actually wrong data or not? We cannot say that. But we, I mean, outlier doesn't mean that this this data is fake or this data is wrong, right? It doesn't mean that. It means it's just an outlier. It is it is not an ordinary ordin ordinary data. So for example, if in a class a student scores 100% marks. So that student is an outlier. We, we cannot say that he has cheated or he has done something, but he is an outlier, right? Uh, he is he, not like the other usual students. Um, in, in, in this graph, you can see that mostly data lies from this point to let's say this point. Now this point and these these points and these points you may call call them outliers or something right this is also outlier so this is a tentative uh, definition of outliers and now let's see why outliers come into our data so one reason can be there 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 can be some measurement error uh, i mean the measuring tool can be wrong if you're measuring the distance if your tool is wrong that can be a reason of of uh, outlier maybe your data is you know corrupt that can also be a reason to produce some outliers and maybe measuring tool is fine data is not corrupt but still outliers are there because let's say we are measuring data of of general public's income and income of bill gates would be sort of an outlier because Bill Gates used to be, you know, the richest man of of the of the uh, world. So, so Bill Gates' income or Steve Jobs' income would be the the s sort of an outliers. Now, what are the methods to eliminate outliers? First method is domain knowledge. For example, we all know that age can never be a negative number. Age starts starts from let's say, I don't know, zero or one, but let's call it zero. But it cannot go below the zero it can only go above the zero so so if we can if in a column of age we see some negative values we'll obviously know that these are the outliers or these are the noises we have to remove them so so if you have good in a good enough domain knowledge you can do that and then there are some statistical methods that we will be studying today one of them is standard deviation or z-score and second is IQR or interquartile range. So let's start with IQR, interquartile range. So first of all, you plot a, a box plot. Uh, we'll learn how to plot it. We you plot a box plot, and by the way, let's go to Python and let's do some practice, and then we'll come back to theory of IQR. So first of all, we will Im import some some libraries, and then we will import some data. Simply, simple, simple. I think. Uh, we don't have to explain now. Let's see how our data looks like. So this is how our data look li looks like and Let's see how it how can we see its summary? 
So he, here is the summary of our data. So these, these are the columns, right? And it has these many rows, 506 rows. And let's, let's say we are talking about this index column. An index column mean is this, minimum value is this, and maximum value is this. And same goes for you, you can check it out. Now let's draw a scatter plot. And you are familiar with this plot we have discussed in, in, in one of the presentation slides. And then let's, let's get started with IQR. And for IQR, we are going to, you know, discover this DIS column. So this DIS column here, you can see that. So we are going, going to study, study this DIS column. So in this DIS column, if I say SNS dot box plot, SNS is a Seaborn library. So we are plotting a box plot and we are plotting DIS column only. So here it is, here is something, it, how it looks like. Now let's study what this box plot tells us. In this box plot, we have, this is, this point is usually called Q1, I mean quarter one. This point is called quarter three. This middle line is called median, right? And this line is called mm, this one, right? And this line refers to this formula. So, so this line is minimum, minimum boundary and this line is maximum boundary. So all the data points that are on the left side of your minimum boundary, they are outliers and all the data points that are right towards right to the maximum boundary that are also outliers. These are the outliers on positive side. These are the outliers on negative side. So how do we actually do that? We will, we will, let's go to um, a Jupyter notebook. You just have to, uh, you just have to, you know, understand these terminologies, Q1, Q3, median and not median, but just you should know that this middle line is called median. So Q1, Q3 and minimum boundary and maximum boundary. Let's go to Jupiter and let's calculate it. And then you'll have, um, hopefully you'll have good enough idea. So here we have a box plot and there is no, ne no outlier on a negative side, but we have some outliers on positive side. So first of all, we will store data. We'll store our column in data variable. And then we will calculate Q25 and Q75. So this Q1 is basically quartile one, which refers that your 25% data lies within this quartile. And Q70, uh, Q3 refers to 75% of data, which means 75% of data lies within Q3. And there's also a thing called Q2, which means obviously I think you've got it. Your 50% data lies within Q2. So Q1 is also called Q25 and Q3 is also called Q75, just for the sake of simplicity. So um, numpy dot percentile will give us Q25 or Q1. We are telling it that we need 25 of this data. 25, it is not percent by the way, it is percentile. So there's a difference between percent and percent and percentile. And then we are saying that we need 75 percentile of the data. We are storing it in Q25 and Q75 respectively. And IQR basically is Q3 minus Q1 or Q75 minus Q25, right? And then we are just displaying the values of Q25, Q75 and IQR. So now we have all these three numbers, Q1, Q3 and IQR. Now we can calculate minimum boundary as well because minimum boundary is equal to Q1 minus 1.5 of 1.5 multiplied by IQR. So that's how we will calculate cutoff uh, IQR multiplied by 1.5. By the way, this 1.5 is just, it, it's not a hard and fast rule. You can change this number according to your need, but most of the practitioners, they use 1.5. So we are, we are also going to use 1.5. You can change it according to your need, according to your data. Mostly 1.5 is being used. So your lower range, we have, we are going to calculate lower range and upper range by exactly following these, these two formulae, right? So minimum boundary is lower range and maximum boundary is your upper range. So lower range is Q25 minus cutoff, right? And upper boundary is Q75 plus cutoff. 
you can again look at the formula and we have implemented exactly same formula now we are good to go we are going to detect outliers remember let's recall what are the outliers the points left side to the to the minimum boundary or lower limit and the points right side towards the uh, right side to the maximum boundary or upper limit those are the outliers so python is a beautiful language and here in just one line we are able to calculate or detect our outliers so we are saying that for x x in data for every x we are iterating over x if x is less than lower right or x is greater than upper uh, you know return x so it will return a list of uh, sort of outliers it will actually return li list of uh, you know the, the the variables over here that are the outliers so we are going to print the length of outliers and then we are, we are going to print the length of original data so let's run it and here you can see uh, it is telling us identified outliers are 30 so these are almost 30 numbers that you can see and total observations are 506 so far we have detected outliers by using this IQR thing right now you might be wondering that where should we use IQR so if your data is not normally distributed this is the normal distribution of data so if your data is not normally distributed the, 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 this is some other distribution the, this is not normal or Gaussian distribution you can use IQR it, it, it normally works fine but if your data is normally distributed then there is another state-of-the-art thing that is called standard deviation or z-score method so let's say your data is normally distributed it like it looks like this and then this is its mean right it's normally distributed uh, around its mean so this is the mean value so if you will get one standard deviation from the mean which means you will go one step sorry one step towards left and one step towards right this is called one one standard deviation it covers 68 percent of your data right and if you will you will go another step which means two steps to the left and two steps to the right it covers 95 percent of your data right so in normal distribution mostly data data occurs you know near the near the the mean value so here are some some uh, readings uh, if standard deviation value is 1 your data coverage would be 68 if value is 2 data coverage would be 95 and if value is 3 data coverage would be 99 you can change these values according to the need this is also called z-score you can change it according to your need if you're very very sensitive towards outlier your your machine learning model or your your anything is very sensitive towards outliers you tend to use maximum value up to 2 for the standard deviation or z-score but if you're fine with some of the outliers and you want to include some boundary values then you can go up to uh, value of 3 as well and if you're going to value 3 then you're almost using your 100% data or exactly 99.7% data so let's go to again Jupyter Notebook and let's implement it it's again very simple we are going to use some built-in libraries and uh, we are going let's let's just plot our data first you can see that it looks like mostly the uh, almost a normal distribution and uh, right now we are using RM column of boost and data frame so histogram telling us it looks like a normal distribution exactly and because most of the points are occurring you know uh, somewhere around the middle so here you can see you can see we are calculating the z-score the z-value right it has a mathematical formula that is already built in stats library that comes from scipy right so we are just calculating it you can implement it it's very easy to implement if you want to implement if you feel any difficulty just comment it we will uh, we'll let you know how to implement it so we are using numpy absolute function that will you know get the absolute value of all the z-scores so here you can see that we are using threshold of 3 which means that standard standard deviation of uh, value is 3 right we, we discussed it over here if it is 3 it will be using 99 percent 99.7 percent of your data 
it will be treating 99.7% of your data as normal data and rest of 0.3% data on extreme right and extreme left would be treated as outliers by the way even in this data this these are these things are, are something we call outliers the, these things right so so let's go and let's see how how we we can find it so numpy dot veer we're using the function a uh, function veer so numpy dot veer z is greater than what is z z is this threshold value so z is greater than threshold Th that would be outlier so now you might be wondering that we are just uh, calculating the greater than thing we are not calculating the less than thing why because we are using absolute function over here For, so negative value would all, would automatically be converted in in positive value so we are just saying that any z that is greater than threshold and what is threshold threshold is three for now which is basically a standard deviation so that that would be called as outlier so this zero is just uh, is, is just being used to convert it into less so let's run it and it, it is showing that these 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 indices are the outliers so it is saying that index 225 is outlier so let's see um, the value on index 225 let's run it it is 8.725 so that's how you you get the value uh, data frame dot i lock which means index location index location 25 and display just the value of column rm right so it is displaying the value and then let's see what is the maximum value in this column here you can see that maximum value is 8.75 and it is displaying 8.725 sorry maximum value 7 point uh, 8.78 and it is displaying the value 8.725 very close to the maximum value so that's why it has it has been treated as an outlier so let's let's do another thing and let's reduce this value to 2 what will happen any guess so if we will reduce this value to 2 it will treat 95% of data as normal data and remaining 5% of data as outlier previously outliers were only 0.3% so here uh, let me let me write it over here so here outliers would be 5% of whole data here outliers would be 0.3% of whole data so right now you can see that uh, with the value 3 outliers are let me let me print the length of this list and it, it is it says 8 and let me also um, write a proper statement so that it looks nice it, it looks nice so number of outliers perfect so number of outliers are three with threshold three oh, sorry, sorry number of outliers are eight with threshold three and let's reduce threshold or standard deviation to two and number of outliers are 32 now previously it was treating only 0.3 percent of data as i told you as outlier but now it is treating five percent of data as outlier and if we will reduce the value of standard deviation or threshold to one it will be treating i think 30 two percent of data if you're very 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 sens sensitive towards outliers use this one if you're very very less sensitive towards outliers use this one and if you're moderate towards outliers this is recommended right so it is totally your choice your practice your practice so guys that's how we have successfully uh, detected the outliers remember we have just detected the outliers in upcoming video we'll be telling uh, we will be telling you how can you remove the outliers now you might be wondering removing the outliers is quite easy we can just you know delete the rows but in next video i will tell you what are the complications with just deleting the rows sometimes you cannot just delete the rows you have to do replacement as well so do support our channel subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon in the description you will find a lot of links to our courses that are specially made for the people who are beginners in data science so until next video bye